Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. A couple of nights ago, I was hunting around on Reverb, and I found a truly magnificent custom order that we need to talk about today. Here it is. Isn't that just a stunning photo? It's like, what is this model? I need to know more. So I click on the listing. It's advertised as a Gibson Les Paul Custom 2015 in a transparent sapphire burst. Okay, so that doesn't tell us too much, but let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Just from this one photo alone, there is so much going on here. The very first thing that caught my eye are the inlays. That comes directly from the Les Paul Artisan, a really cool model that was birthed in the mid-70s and was discontinued around 1982. If you want to learn more about those, you can check out one of my multiple reviews and demos on one. But these inlays actually originated before that back on old Gibson banjos. They called them the hearts and flowers. Then the next thing that I noticed is this sapphire blue finish with this quilty maple top. Something about the color blue and quilt tops just always work out perfectly in my opinion. And it's looking fairly modern because we don't actually have any type of a poker chip on there. You can tell they've done it Les Paul custom in style with the 7 ply binding, but here's something really interesting. They chose blacked out hardware, including the pickup covers. It looks like uh, somebody's sweaty hands or whatnot has kind of corroded it a little bit, but that's just how that always happens. They even went as far as putting the metal knurled knobs, which I really don't like on this guitar, but I get why they did it. They wanted it to be the black chrome, but that looks so modern, whereas everything else is kind of going for an aesthetic beauty thing, whereas this is like totally utilitarian. But then when I flipped over to the backside of this guitar, my mouth just dropped. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They've done a quilty maple back. Now, it's not like the Les Paul Supreme that we were talking about a day or two ago. This is not a carved back. It's a flat back like a regular Les Paul. So that likely means this is just some sort of a thin veneer. Usually when Gibson does this, it's like a quarter of an inch thick or something. But that means the back is just about equally as beautiful as the front. So that's just a really nice sight to see. And if we look really closely right here, you can tell it does borrow the back binding from a Supreme though, because that's three ply binding instead of the multiply that's on the front. But when I saw this, it reminded me of a limited edition model from 2017. This was actually the Would You Rock or Not episode number 71. They just called it the Les Paul limited edition premium quilt. But this thing had a very similar vibe going on, a quilty top with a very modern finish, this time a translucent ebony. Again, no poker chip. They went all with a chromed out hardware here with the chrome toppers on the pickup rings and your pearl tipped chrome knob. So I guess I can see where some of the influence of this custom order might have came into play here. But the back of this one just got single ply binding, so it's a little bit different here. But they do have this limited edition medallion, which I really appreciate because it tells you what number out of 150 it is. This one just happened to be number 22. And you can tell right here, this has the same style of backplate as the ones that we're looking at today. That's the kind that has the built-in shielding to it. But the sides, it just appears to be a black color, maybe? Slightly green? I guess it could just be a really dark blue color at the same time and it just looks different because it's on the mahogany body. Unfortunately, there are not enough photos for me to determine that right now. But moving on to the neck, besides the inlays, it appears that we have some sort of an ebony fretboard. Which remember, we're in 2015. That is not the ebony era for Gibson. That's when they were using rich light. So maybe we'll have to check out the description here to see if that's actually ebony. Because if it is, that makes that a historic piece of Gibson history. But now moving on to the face of the headstock, you get the flower pot inlay, which if you don't know about the limited edition run of classic customs, you can check out this video right here. In 2014, there was a limited edition classic custom that had that. That's not where they initially came from. That was the old arch top models. But as far as Les Pauls go anyways, that's one of the more famous ones that people will know. You get a Les Paul custom truss rod cover, the multiply binding around the headstock here. And this appears to be a Gibson USA made product so far. And you get, once again, the black chrome tuners. But it's not just the back of the body that's awesome. Take a look at this neck. It is a single piece flamed up to wazoo maple neck. Usually when Gibson does the super flamed out necks, they'll be multi-piece. So you don't see a one piece flame maple neck like that too often. Cause I mean, that is some select lumber right there. But to make things even better for this guitar, 
Take a look at this. It actually has a volute, just like the 70s models and old arch top guitars. So there's a lot of throwbacks on this particular model to a bunch of stuff. So for that, I think it's really interesting. But then, take a look at this headstock. We zoom in here, it says Made in USA 2015 model. Okay, so if you know anything about Gibson history, 2015 they did that wider fretboard and the brass nut on pretty much everything. They would have Les Paul on the backside of the headstock. So the fact that this is a 2015 and it doesn't have that, that also makes this kind of collectible. But here's where things get strange. Take a look at your serial number. So 2015, all 2015 serial numbers will start 15, and then it's your production out of that entire year. This one does not follow that format. That would tell us it's like a 2041 model or a 1941. Or if you go back to traditional styles, it would be telling us it's a 1949 or a 2049, 121st day of the year. Apparently we're doing nine batches in a day and it's the 515th within that. Yeah, this serial number makes absolutely zero sense. Is this a fake? Well, let's go ahead and check out this guy's description. He's telling us it is a truly one-of-a-kind Gibson custom guitar, and it was designed by a 20-plus year veteran of Gibson. And hey, I was onto something here. He was trying to blend the new classic custom with the Gibson Supreme. Okay, yeah, he definitely did some of that. Now, he calls that inlay on the headstock the burning urn, which I could see how someone might think that, but I've always been told it's a flower pot because you get the flower right there and then that, but I guess it, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. And nice, this confirms that it is an ebony fretboard. So that's quite significant. Apparently Gibson did have some ebony or this guy just stashed it back in his pile. But here they're saying that the frets are placed over the binding to prevent binding peel. Okay, I think what he's talking about here it doesn't look like we have any really good close-up photos, but this does not have fret nibs. Which I guess that's kind of a thing they were doing in 2015 anyways. In 2014, they did away with fret nibs for a very short period of time, so that's about period correct here. And that's because sometimes you get a small gap between the fret nibs and the frets, and that can cause your string to catch. That's mainly prevalent in like late 90s, early 2000s models. By the 2010s, that had pretty much been corrected. But many people just prefer the fret to go over the edge anyways. As far as electronics, they're saying 57 classics in here, so it's not like active pickups like it looks. Which I'm very thankful that those are not active pickups. And they're saying it's all hand-wired, which a lot of stuff at this point in time was a PCB system. So that's another kind of interesting fact. So it seems like a guy who knew what he was doing as far as design, had the parts, could make this, and it's all good. However, I don't mean to throw shade on this listing, so please don't harass this guy. But I'm wondering if this was actually built outside of the Gibson factory. Because that serial number makes absolutely zero sense. Like, maybe he just took these parts home and he built it himself, finished it himself. Because it's clearly been made at the Gibson factory. Everything looks the way it should. And it could just be something as simple as this is like his birthday in a really weird way or his badge number. Because I've heard rumors that once you've been at Gibson for so long, at a certain milestone, you're allowed to just build your own guitar. So it could very well be one of those. But what really freaks me out is the fact that we have this TKL case and there's no case candy, no documentation. It's a Gibson USA product, so it's not going to have anything super fancy, but not having the Gibson case, eh, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way here. And I think in order to get somewhere around this ballpark, we would need a little bit more documentation to prove that this was actually built at Gibson and isn't just some sort of a homebrew mashup of parts. So far, the story seems to be holding true. It says it's listed in Nashville, Tennessee. I mean, that's very likely where somebody would live if they were going to build a guitar like this. So I think we just need a little bit more documentation than, yeah, I think a certain collector might pay upwards of like 5,000 to maybe 6,000. So I don't think he's too far off his price here. But without any paperwork, that's the reason why I decided to go the would you rock or not wiring route here on this one instead of going for a full review and documentation. It's a cool guitar. I love all the little specs and throwbacks that he threw onto here. So I'll be curious to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comment section below.
So for our playing demo today, let's go ahead and check out one of those 2017 Les Pauls that we were talking about since it's probably going to be the closest thing that we can get to this one. The only question left, would you rock this custom Les Paul or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with a friend who you think would enjoy it. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.